I'd like to start by saying big, big thanks to Focus Nordic for sponsoring this video. Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto and I'm a photographer. And in this video, I'm going to show you some really cool things that you can do with the Tamron Lens Utility app and how that can make your photography and filming more convenient, easier and probably also more fun. With the Lens Utility app, you can customize your Tamron lens. When I'm recording this video, there are two compatible lenses. This 28-75 f2.8 G2 and the 35 to 150 f2 to 2.8. Both lenses have a USB-C connector on the side and you can connect the lens to your computer with a USB cable. But before you can start customizing your lens, you have to go to Tamron website and download the free lens utility app. When you open the app, you have basically three options. You can update the lens firmware and you can customize the lens when it's mounted on a camera body and then one more option is to customize the lens without it being mounted on a camera body. And if you decide to customize your lens when it's mounted on the camera body, remember to turn on your camera because otherwise the application cannot see your lens. This time I'm going to customize just the lens without a camera. Let me connect the lens and hit the start button. And right away I can see the picture of the lens and when I move the mouse over the lens I can select either the focus ring or the lens button. I can also go to the left side menu and choose from there what I want to customize or I can go below the lens and select either the lens button or focus ring. So there are quite a few options to do this. With this 28 to 75 millimeter lens, I can customize the button or the focus ring. But with the 35 to 150 millimeter lens, you can also customize the switch on the side of the lens and that gives you some more options. Let me first show you what you can do with the focus ring. The first option is to choose the focus ring rotation, whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise. And this is very important if you have many lenses that turn to certain direction and your muscle memory has used to that, it's very important to have the same direction on all lenses, of course. And then you save your selection. And then you can choose the manual focus ring method, whether it's linear or non-linear. I like the linear option. With the 35 to 150 millimeter lens, you also have the option to choose the focus ring travel, whether it's 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 or 360 degrees. And this is also very nice, especially for video shooting. And now let's go to the lens button and that has quite a few options here. The first one is to assign a function from camera and if you choose that then you go to your camera menu and choose the function from there. And the second option selects if the lens works as a manual focus or autofocus lens. So when you press the button or hold it for one second, depending on your choice, the lens will turn to a manual focus lens. And when you press the button or hold it again, the lens will turn back to an autofocus lens. And this uh, hold option is really nice because then you are not likely to unintentionally change anything. The next one is focus preset and this is very interesting. First you focus to your desired pre-focus distance and then hold the button for one second. And after that, whenever you quickly touch the button, the lens will return to that pre-focused distance. And this is of course very very handy for video. And for video you can also choose the focus speed so it goes nice and smooth. But I like to use this for street photography, which I usually do at 28 millimeters. I like the fixed focus distance because then I don't have to worry about focusing at all. I just stop down far enough to about f11 or 16 to have enough depth of field. 
I set my pre-focus distance to about 3-4 meters and uh, I can quickly return to that every time I press the button. But if I want to take, all of a sudden I want to take a picture of something far away with say 70 millimeter focal length, I can quickly go back to autofocus by touching the button. And then I can switch back to my street settings again by touching the button. And I think it's very very useful for that too. The next one is AB focus and this is even more interesting because here you can choose two focus points and do focus pulls from A to B and back as many times as you want. First you focus to your first focus point A and hold the button for one second. Then you focus to your focus point B and hold the button again for one second. And after that whenever you quickly press the button the focus will move from A to B and back as many times as you want. You can also choose the focus speed so it's nice and smooth and uh, the way you like it in your video. And I like to use this for my b-roll shots where I have to pull focus from a product to another for example. And I can do unlimited amount of repeatable focus pulls as long as I like. And I think this is a really really neat feature. And the next option lets you use the focus ring for aperture control. So when you press the button or hold it for one second, depending on your choice, the focus ring will turn to an aperture ring. And when you press or hold the button again, the aperture ring will turn back to a focus ring. That's a really cool feature and very practical too. I prefer the hold option because then I don't accidentally change anything so easily. And the last setting will clear all settings to factory defaults. So if you think you messed up your lens, just hit the clear settings and uh, it's all gonna be good. With the Tamron 35-250 mm lens, you can also customize the switch on the side of the lens. And then you have more options available while you're using the lens, depending on how you set the switch. That is really nice and it makes the lens a little bit more versatile than this 28-75. to And once you're done you can save your current settings. This is very practical because you can have several different settings for video, shooting, street photography, product photography or whatever. And then if you know that you're going to be doing some certain type of shooting, you can just load the appropriate settings before you start using the lens. And then in the lower right corner, you have the reset button that uh, resets the lens to factory defaults, which is also nice if you think that you uh, somehow messed up with the lens. On the left side you also have the function list and there you can see all the available options that you have for your lens. I think Tamron has done a really good job with their lens utility app. And the best part is that you don't need any extra accessories to customize your lens. It's also going to be interesting to see what kind of new features and functions they will add in the future. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.